Ik geloof ik aan dat. So I've been recently looking at a lot of mech manga and specifically Gundam manga. There's just something about the manga art style when it's applied to uh, mechs that is so appealing to me. Stuff like Gundam, Macross and basically every other mech manga out there, there's a certain style to it that um, is unique to manga. I just found out about this pen nib that apparently a lot of uh, manga artists use. It's called the uh, G pen nib. So I bought myself one to, to try it out. So the one that I got was the Tachikawa G pen nib. And I think a couple of other brands make uh, G nibs as well. Um, I think Zebra makes one, Tachikawa of course, and I, maybe Kuretake. So it's brand new and you can see it's not really expensive. It's like $2. So let's just take it out of the bag. Okay, so the reason it's called the uh, G nib is because of its shape here uh, which looks like the letter G. I guess what I really want to know is what the hype is about with this pen nib you know. I see it everywhere touted as the manga pen nib and I don't know why. What specifically about this is made for drawing manga. I did some research online of course and all I got were these vague descriptions like oh it's got just the right flexibility and the right stiffness for drawing manga which really means nothing at all to me until I actually try this out for myself. So I'm gonna do a little bit of drawing with this today but this is brand new and we can't just draw with it yet. There's a little bit of prep work to be done. So all pen nibs come packaged with a coating of oil over it. Um, it's used to prevent rusting so scrubbing it with a little bit of dish soap and warm water will remove that coating and your pen nib is now ready to use. Okay, so my sketch is done and uh, before I even like jump straight into uh, the uh, drawing with the ink and everything, I think I, I really should test it out and see what the nib is about. So let me just do that right now. Alright, so I'm just gonna test out some strokes on another piece of paper and see what the deal is with this nib. So I've got myself here a spare piece of paper. Here. Okay, and I'm just gonna try it out and see what immediately it feels a lot different from the uh, Steno that I have. Uh, it's a lot stiffer, I think. Okay, I think that's enough ink. Try it out and see. Hopefully, I prepped it correctly. Okay. So it's not super stiff. Not, I don't think it doesn't feel as flexible as uh, the uh, Steno that I usually use, but I think you can get thinner lines. It's very nice and scratchy. Um, it's also brand new, so um, I'm definitely getting finer lines, and it feels a lot stiffer than uh, this one. Yeah, it's definitely a lot sharper and I have to press down a little bit harder just to get um, a thicker line. Holds ink relatively well, uh, but I shouldn't press too hard otherwise you know, too much ink comes out and it starts to bleed. So I just have to be careful of that. So I can press down like about 80% of the way but not 100% because then you get a lot of bloom here. It's nice. Well, I think we're ready to just jump right into it. So going back to the initial sketch, it was a really quick one that I did in about five minutes. So Gundam are usually very proportioned like a human person. So I initially started the sketch based off of a human proportion, a human frame. And, and just pose it that way but along there I started to alter it a little bit to fit the proportions of a Sazabi. So the Gundam I'm drawing is the Sazabi Gundam and I have a soft spot for this Gundam uh, but it does have a really exaggerated proportion in the sense that it has a really small head, really big body and really oversized legs. 
So it was a bit of a challenge trying to get it to be posed a little bit more dynamically. So usually when you see Sazabis uh, as a model kit or even a drawing, it's posed usually very statically and very, you know, stiff because the design is rather unwieldy in the sense that, you know, you can't really move it around too much because, you know, it's really big and things just collide if you try to pose it to a too extreme of a pose. So that was a challenge for me and I did size it a bit more proportionately um, according to like the older versions of a Sazabi. So if you see the newer iterations of a Sazabi, like the the newer it gets, the smaller the head gets. So it's not 100% uh, accurate to the real version of the Sazabi. So, but I just altered it to fit my pose a bit better. So moving on to the pen nib, the G pen nib, uh, which is what the topic of this video is about. You know, I went into this thinking that it would alter my line quality a lot and that, you know, whatever I drew would automatically come out looking like some sort of manga panel. But ultimately, I don't think it looks that different compared to my drawings with the Staino, which is my usual pen nib. I think that I kind of got sucked into the hype of the G pen based on, you know, what I've read on the internet. And I was a little bit underwhelmed, I'm gonna be honest. And it really isn't some sort of magical silver bullet that is gonna make you draw like a manga artist. I I'm sure if you gave Murata like a random pen nib, he would still be able to draw like Murata. And I was drawing this, I, I couldn't help but think every stroke I made, I was like, I could have done this with the Staino. Like I could have probably done a better job if I just use my usual one, like this isn't that much better. And it sort of goes to show that, you know, no matter how quote unquote inferior your tool is, and if that's your only tool and you're really familiar and really comfortable with it, you will be able to make good art regardless of how crappy your drawing materials are. And look, I'm not trying to say that the G pen nib is a crappy piece of uh, equipment. What I'm trying to say is that it's not inherently better for drawing manga than any other nib. And I think that if you really wanted to draw in that style, it would be more productive to just pick one nib. It could be the G pen, it could be something else, and just stick to it and try and capture the style that is inherent to manga and try and look beyond the surface of, oh, this pen nib is going to automatically make you a manga artist and just spend time trying to chase that magical piece of stationery that will make you better. So I scanned the drawing and brought it into Photoshop and first of all I did some color correction and just adjusted the contrast a little bit. Then I adjusted the proportions of the legs just to fit um, so it looks more like a sazabi basically. I, I felt like the lower portion of the body was a little bit too small and it didn't really fit the um, chunky feel that a sazabi has. And then up next, I put in uh, some manga screen tones and now what would be a manga drawing without these um, very iconic dotted screen tones. At first, I wanted to do it physically, like traditionally, with a real screen tone sheet. But my god, they're really expensive. Like I saw some on Deleter and they were like five, six dollars for a sheet. And that's not even including shipping from Japan. So I went online and found these uh, screen tone textures and I just decided to do it digitally instead and I bet that a lot of manga artists or manga studios do that nowadays just because of how expensive screen tone is and how unforgiving the process is traditionally speaking. Like in Photoshop I could just mask it out and erase and paint it back in as I see fit but like if you were to do this like physically if you cut the wrong shape that's it you gotta open up a new sheet and that's another six dollars down the drain. So I decided to experiment with different types 
of screen tones so some of them are darker than others you know based on how close the dots are together and how small they are you can definitely affect the darkness of some certain areas and I'll use like a darker screen tone for the darker parts of the sasabi and, and I noticed that mangas lately you know the newer ones they have a finer screen tone pattern just because I think they're doing it digitally now you know they might not even be using screen tone patterns it might just be flat gray in digital and the dots are an artifact of you know the physical printing process so you don't see those dots as prominently as you did for like older stuff and i decided to to stick to like the older style that you know the stuff that i grew up reading you know stuff like doraemon or slam dunk or dragon ball um, i decided to make the dots a lot more prominent a lot bigger and it just has this very lo-fi aesthetic to it that i like I do think that the screen tone contributes a lot more to the manga style than I would say the pen nib itself, you know. Maybe you could use a regular brush pen or even like a ballpoint pen drawing and if you put a black and white screen tone over it like this, you would get really close to looking like a manga panel. So here I added in the background, which is what all that masking was all about. And then just adjusting some uh, values, just to make the line art a little bit more prominent. I think the line art, the background was a bit too dark to see the line art. So I just lightened it up a little bit and there you go. Um, if you like this video, like it, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Bye. Thanks for watching.